Here's in the NHL, a dozen Stanley Cup finals, the Olympics, uh, two All-Star games, the Winter Classic, the World Cup, you name it, uh, over 2100 is a lot of games. You've seen a lot. You were there the night that Scott Stevens got Eric Lindros. You were there the night Patty LaFontaine was dinged in 1996. So, Kerry, you've been clearly critical of the NHL uh, since your retirement and all the interviews. It seems to come up a lot that you don't like where they are on headshots. Well, first of all, Ron, what I said at the uh, Mayo Clinic uh, Hockey Summit was that I applaud the NHL, first of all, for the blindside hits that are being clamped down on. Absolutely. The suspensions that have happened early, it's precedent setting. Uh, but I think there's more to do. I think the, the frontal north-south hit that a player is exposed, vulnerable, and his head is contacted, I don't think there's any place for it. Having been given the information that I received from Dr. Cantu and his, his colleagues uh, from North America and the world, uh, if a player saw the result long-term to what could happen to a head hit, series of concussions, I don't think they'd ever want to be hit in the head, nor would they ever hit another player in the head. It is the one preventable uh, brain injury, that CTE. You could actually do something about that. So the, the Stevens hit on Eric is the one. Both, unfortunately, succumbed to injuries. And they were legal hits. Yeah. So you would, uh, you would do something about that hit? You would suspend Scott Stevens or call it a... A penalty if you had to do it again. Well, Tell it, us about that one. because you, you On the Eric it. play, I mean, Eric always skated with his head down. Uh, he, he was used to playing in junior hockey with, uh, with smaller players. He came into the NHL. The very first game I had, he played. Uh, and, uh, or he played that I refereed. And I said to my wife, Kathy, afterwards, what do you think of this guy? And I said, if he lasts, he's going to be phenomenal because of his reckless abandon, playing full speed ahead, trying to go over people. There's a responsibility, obviously, on the player with the puck. He's got to keep his head up. We learned that as, as young players. Everybody does. Uh, but from a perspective with a player that has his head exposed, I just think that a checker can alter his path and hit something much larger, shoulders, body, than this small head that's coming at him. We we took away the uh, hip checks, uh, the low bridging, so you know, we've done some things to, to change the game. Do you think that's responsible? Well, Ron, everything, the yeah. check up, they, you know, all of the players, all of the footage you see, they coil their legs and they check up. They vault themselves up. And most of the hits that we saw at the Mayo Clinic from the NHL uh, people uh, were feet off the ice as much as six inches. So when the contact is made, obviously you as a referee know that that is a penalty when their feet leave the ice, it's charging. Uh, but nonetheless, that is the culture of checking that has taken over. Bob Ganey, Craig Ramsey, uh, Guy Carboneau, and the other great checkers that I saw separated the player from the puck. Today, it seems, let's do the big hit, let's separate his head from the shoulders. In a world where there was a little bit of hook and hold, in a world where certainly Brian Burke's suggestion of the bear hug, you know, when Randy Jones got Patrice Bergeron, sure. that's the classic example of Absolutely. a defenseman had no option but to cork the guy. Ron, I saw guys that would be carrying a player into the boards, or there was one that was exposed in the tough hockey of the 70s and 80s, and he'd say, look out, I'm coming, because the guy was vulnerable. Mm -hmm. The respect from player to player has to be solved, and that may come at the PA level, and I think obviously the NHL, in their direction with can't hit from the blind side, let's do a little more though. And this is meant to be constructive, Colin Campbell and all the uh, folks at Hockey Operations, but uh, for the referees, this is a really tricky one. You had two situations that happened last year at OJ where a call gets overturned by mission control. Sure. And that, you think, is having a detrimental effect on the referees and their ability to do the job. And here are the two examples. Maxine Talbot gets corked by Steve Bejan and David Kochi later here on Steve Thomas. What happened? Well, in this play, I see it coming. He's, he's exposed, bang, and he goes right up into the face. I think there's another option there. Uh, he elevated his elbow at the end and finished the hit high. Uh, so in that case, there was a hunt from behind by Kochi that came off the bench, and this player unaware and gets clocked in the jaw. He's knocked out face first, and it's over. And what happened with the lead, though? What did they say to you well, about Well, they were deemed to be good hockey hits at the time. Obviously, now, I'm sure that Coley and, and uh, the uh, Board of Governors, general managers, realize that that isn't the case. Uh, so they were rescinded. But the message in that to the other officials that see it on Sports Center and they see it on your shows, and they say, gee, that looked like a penalty, but obviously it's not, so I'm not going to call that. So there's that trickle-down effect. I think clear direction would be now, obviously, the right one, don't hit from the side, don't blindside hit. Let's work now on the front a little bit. As you say, we've educated them on a lot of things uh, through the last couple of years. Here's your book. Final call is just out. Congratulations. It's fantastic. You have something for Don Cherry Grapes. Is Grapes in here? Supposed to be here for a presentation. Well, you know David, what? Did you get Grapes? No, it doesn't no? matter. Well, well I got to tell you, he always wanted me to put the whistle away. This is the whistle from my last game, so I want to retire it to Grapes, and he can dispose of it as I know he would do best.
Uh, so they were rescinded. But the message in that to the other officials that see it on Sports Center and they see it on your shows, and they say, gee, that looked like a penalty, but obviously it's not, so I'm not going to call that. So there's that trickle down effect. I think clear direction would be now, obviously, the right one. Don't hit from the side. Don't blindside hit. Let's work now on the front a little bit. As you say, we've educated them on a lot of things uh, through the last couple of years. Here's your book. Final call is just out. Congratulations. It's fantastic. You have something for Don Cherry Grapes. Is Grapes in here? Supposed to be here for a presentation. Well, you know what? Did you get grapes? No. It doesn't no? matter. Well, well I got to tell you, him. he always wanted me to put the whistle away. This is the whistle from my last game, so I want to retire it to Grapes, and he can dispose of it as I know he would do best.